Well, it seems that we are traveling back in time to the year 2020, where colleges and businesses are ramping up their COVID-19 safety measures in hopes to slow the spread. Remember that campaign, guys? PSYOP, rather. It didn't work then, and it's not going to work now. But that's not stopping places like Lionsgate Studios in Hollywood and the University of Michigan for reinstating their COVID-19 protocols and mask mandates. You might remember Morris Brown College in Atlanta was on this list too, but they just announced this week that they are dropping their recent mask mandate after facing backlash. So I guess it's time we put the pressure on University of Michigan who has recently come into the spotlight after telling students that if they test positive for COVID-19, they need to quarantine in a hotel room for five days, as they will not be allowed in the residence halls if they test positive. The school also encourages students to wear a mask, get tested, and stay home if they're feeling sick. It's like 2020 all over again. What's the definition of insanity? Dr. Greg Marchand joins me now with his thoughts on this, Arizona-based OBGYN. Doctor, thank you for being here. Didn't we learn anything about these strict COVID policies and how they don't work? You're exactly right. It looks exactly as if we just learned nothing. Uh, you know, if you look at this policy at the University of Michigan, it's going to be a bad policy for a lot of different reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, you've got a person at the college, you know, college is generally going to be full of young, healthy people. Uh, and instead of keeping the infection and isolating it there, we're going to go ahead and take that person who's tested positive for COVID, move them to a hotel in the community. Uh, you know, first thing I'm imagining is that somebody's grandparents are in that hotel for the football game, you know, maybe an immunocompressed, immunocompromised or elderly couple, and we're going to go and expose them. A much better idea for dealing with this would have been to just go ahead and offer some additional rooms so the roommates uh, or the person who's infected could just be in a different dorm room while they're recovering and just keep them away from the others until symptoms resolve. It is completely illogical. All of these measures and, and countermeasures, uh, nothing really adds up, right? The, the six feet and the, you know, back when the, the restaurants, um, you had to, you could walk in with a mask, but once you sat down, you could take your mask off. Um, I think a lot of people know something, something's up, right? And I, I think this is a great sign that, you know, when we people come together, uh, do not comply, civil disobedience really can go a long way. Um, and recently uh, on CNN, actually a host confronted Anthony Fauci about the effectiveness of masks. Can we check that out? There is a perception out there by many, how many, I don't know, that they don't work and that the data concludes that they didn't work in the first go round. Respond to that on masks. Yeah, well, that's not so. I mean, when you're talking about at the population level, that the data are less strong than knowing that if you look on a situation as an individual protecting themselves or protecting them from spreading it, there's no doubt that masks work. Different studies give different percentages of advantage of wearing it, but there's no doubt that the weight of the studies, and there have been many studies, indicate the benefit of wearing masks. What do you make of Fauci's response and, and what would you say to him? Yeah, that was a very interesting response. I was shocked. I had to check the bottom of the screen to make sure it was really CNN when they actually asked a, you know, a hard-hitting question. Um, but since the Cochrane Institute released their meta-analysis on masks showing there's just no benefit, there's really not much of an argument that there's a benefit. Now, he was bright and he uh, quickly uh, hightailed and went back to the argument that, oh, in some individual circumstance, it might be useful. And I mean, nobody can say that there is it possibly one person with uh, some special immunocompromised out there some special disease that it's going to benefit. Uh, but it was really surprising to see CNN use a hard-hitting question like that. And there really just isn't any efficacy for masks now that we have the hard data from the meta-analysis to show. They just don't help to stop the spread of COVID. And um, we've got some news. Yesterday, Jill Biden, first lady, has tested positive for COVID and is apparently experiencing mild symptoms. Um, I mean, is this something that you really even would want a vaccine for? As we know, every medicine has potential side effects, right? And if you're just, you know, getting mild symptoms from something like this, is that really necessary? What's, what's the obsession with continued vaccinations? 
Oh, you're exactly right. And this article is just another example of why cookie cutter medicine, uh, why statements from the CDC and other bodies saying that, oh, everyone should just get it if you're older than six months are just are just ludicrous. They're just bad medicine. Here we've got Jill Biden, uh, certainly access to the best health technology there is. I'm sure she's getting every vaccine and every booster the second it's available. And, you know, just demonstrating that these vaccines do not prevent COVID uh, infection. Uh, so that's why you really have to trail back to each person should talk to their individual physician, physician that's familiar with their history, their physical examination, and make a decision with the physician one-on-one. -on -one. And I'll tell you, in a lot of situations, especially knowing that these vaccines now can cause, you know, cardiac death problems, uh, they can cause some problems during pregnancy, you know, knowing that in some situations, the risks of taking the vaccine uh, will not outweigh the benefit of, of possibly avoiding COVID. Yeah, there were just so many red flags um, that, you know, were just a part of this whole operation. Um, one being obviously recommending it to everybody across the board. That sounded, I'm not a doctor, but that sounded insane to me. Um, and another uh, was demonizing ivermectin, which was known to the world before as a wonder drug, uh, before it was demonized because of its ability to help treat COVID, right? Um, the Associated Press actually recently reported there's a federal appeals court uh, that has revived a lawsuit by three doctors who say the FDA overstepped its authority in a campaign against treating COVID-19 with the anti-parasite drug. Do you think there is overwhelming evidence to support this case? Oh, absolutely. This was one of the most ridiculous things I'd ever seen a government agency do. Uh, the FDA was just religiously against the use of ivermectin, and they went as so far as to launch this silly campaign uh, telling people you are not a horse. I mean, just obviously setting out to deceive people uh, that ivermectin is not a medication used for humans, when obviously it is. Uh, you know, a fair comparison would have been something like uh, you don't have a parasite, you have a virus or, or something like that. But they sought out specifically to deceive people uh, just to defame ivermectin. And yeah, there's a few doctors on this lawsuit. I know one of them lost this job. Another one lost a prestigious position at a medical school. And, and I think they should be compensated. I think the FDA definitely is liable here uh, for what they did in the way they tried to deceive the public in this case. Wow. And, you know, unfortunately, we have to we have to wonder, will they even receive a fair trial when, you know, there's so much money uh, behind this? I mean, Big Pharma is not going to let that, they're not going to go down without a without a fight. Right. You're absolutely right about that. There'll be a lot of money surrounding this trial. All right, Dr. Marchand, we are all out of time for today, but thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. We'd like to welcome you to our new home for uncensored news and hard-hitting talk shows. If you're tired of cable companies and social media giants chipping away at your most basic and important right, freedom of speech, by shadow banning, demonetizing, censoring, and policing every single one of your posts, then One America News on Locals is just what you've been looking for. Finally, you'll have the freedom to express your point of view and stay connected like-minded fellow patriots. And the best part is, OAN on Locals is only five bucks a month. All of our credible, honest, unbiased reporting, ad-free talk shows, and exclusive content, all at the fraction of the cost of cable. So to watch, just click the Join button to get the news you can't get anywhere else.